Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell. And of course, you're watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined by my good friend, Benjamin Brown. Benjamin, what's up, my brother? What's up, buddy? Thank you for having me back on the show. It's awesome to have you. So actually, he is a third timer on the Jay Campbell podcast. In fact, he was on before it became the Jay Campbell podcast. He was on the TOT Revolution podcast yep. way back in the day. Way back. Uh, let me give you guys Ben's uh, bio for those of you guys who don't know him. And yes, I do have a lot more new people on my channel and podcast subscription, but he's the owner of BSL Nutrition, uh, which makes amazing products. I have them actually right now down in my cabinet. It's a pre-workout. Uh, a systemic health coaching company working with clients virtually all over the world. Systemic health is a paradigm shift from restrictive behaviors to health freedom by leveraging the science of real world data, the psychology of behavior change, and the art of coaching. It is the convergence of health goals, lifestyle, and sustained success. Ben holds two master's degrees, the first from Arizona State University in exercise and wellness with an emphasis in strength and conditioning. And the second from the University of Bridgeport in clinical nutrition. Awesome. Very, very, very deeply understood and researched. Most importantly, Ben is a husband and father. I love that. To three young kids, which I didn't actually ask you about as we were talking off air, who provide the daily love, motivation, and humility he uses as a driving force to continue to learn and grow as a man, mentor, and coach. Amazing. Ben is an amazing guy. His wife actually, is it what, in the last two years, got left the corporate hustle and is yeah. now working with you direct. So kind of like me and my wife, but although yeah. I'm not, you know, I left her behind and she's now doing the real estate stuff and I'm now doing <laughs> whatever guys. So, I mean, I get it though. And, you know, truthfully, I was going to say this to you, maybe you can comment on this. It was brutal for me when I, you know, left the wage slave company man corporate world back in 2012, when I met my current wife, Monica, and got involved in, you know, the entrepreneur game of real estate. And I'm telling you, man, maybe you can comment. I'm sure your wife has been through it, but it's not an easy thing when you're trained to be a, you know, a wage earner, you know, a, a tech, I mean, a W2 person. So like, how's it been? And like, how, how hard has it been for her to integrate? Yeah, that's such a good question, dude. And I think so relevant because I've never, I've always considered myself unemployable. So like right from the time I was, I, I, I had a couple of, you know, my show, bro. Right. So I had a couple short stints at, at, at jobs, so to speak, um, sure. but very short lived. And I always felt like I was the type of person that could do things better than of course the management was doing them. And sure. so shortly after went on my, on my own. And of course my wife, Christina, she's kind of been in this, we'll, we'll say corporate, but, um, you know, she's really been a hard charging individual in terms of, of, of the positions that she's held. She's had jobs in membership services, concierge work, working with high, high end private golf club communities. Nice. And then most recently found herself in a position that really was kind of corporate, was, was kind of overseeing membership for a big, big community, multi-million dollar facility, big community center. And um, it was really difficult uh, because the demands obviously never end with that type of position. Uh, and and her being a, the hard charger that she is found herself in a situation where she was constantly torn. I'm sure many people can relate to this that have been in corporate America, that are in corporate America, right? Of, of being torn between family, between work, between upholding their values and ideals and you know becoming the type of person that they you know, you know, strive to become and, and, and needing to kind of feel like they support the family, uh, in some way. And for her was a lot of kind of feeling valued, right. On a day-to-day -day basis, I think, which is really relevant for so many people is just showing up to work because you know, people value you. And especially for a mom, as an example, it's like you're, if you're home with the kids, which is an indeed no noble job, but you're sure. not getting like day-to-day -day gratification. I mean, and so I think that was a really difficult dichotomy for her to the degree that it really created a lot of friction um, mm -hmm. and was creating a lot of friction in our life and our marriage, right? Because invariably I know what kind of it feels like to have that quote unquote freedom at, that, right. that I had built over the years. Mm -hmm. And so much so that so many conversations we had was like, well, one was Jay was, by virtue of her working such ridiculous hours, it was compromising my ability to show up 
and perform, you know, in my daily responsibilities mm-hmm. for me to right. be able to effectively grow the business. And and that was okay. That was fine. But it was also that, you know, it meant that I needed to do more things around the house that I needed to do, take, take on more responsibilities with the right. kids again, totally fine. But the conversation often lends it, lended itself to, Hey babe, you do realize like, if you simply came on with BSL nutrition and your efforts helped contribute to even just like one or two more clients a month, we would already be replacing the income, you know, that you were making, right? right? To say nothing of the potential for exactly. growth long term, right. to say nothing of how this would uh, allow you the opportunity to leverage your time to actually for us to be able to value your, um, expertise for you to be able to start to take care of yourself again, because there had been a couple of years where she really, you know, hadn't prioritized her health and well-being. And she just was, wasn't the person I knew, nor the person that she wanted to be. Right. And so it's a very uh, long-winded answer of saying, it's just, it had stripped her of so much of what made her, you know, um, the person that she loved and that I loved. And, yeah. mm-hmm. and by virtue of her then quitting finally in July of 2020 and taking the last couple of years to really start to find her identity and take care of herself again and have the ability to be with the kids has been absolutely revolutionizing for us. That's amazing, bro. And honestly, that wasn't a long-winded. I thought you did an admirable, if not a noble, if not an amazing job of explaining it all. And look, I, I understand, like, you know, she really... I mean, I went through it myself. I mean, it's the inverse because like I was always a corporate guy, you know, and Mm. I rose to the highest levels, you know, as I was a sales manager and then I was a VP and then I was an executive VP. And, you know, so, I mean, I get it. And, you know, that title and that responsibility and that travel and all those people that you report Mm. to and that you supervise and that you manage, it, it, it becomes so overwhelming. And so I get where she was because, and then there's the thing you, you left out, which, and I love how you say you're unemployable because, bro, I don't know how I was employed. I mean, I'll, I'll put it this way. <laughs> I was employed before political correctness and cancel culture came in, right? Because Right, right. Or else you wouldn't have been employed. No, no, no. I mean, I've had many conversations with guys older than me who, you know, and women who we've talked about this recently, like, oh, my God, like in the last 10 years, forget it. But the one thing you didn't mention, which I know was her deal, too, because I've been right there is two checks a month, bro. You know, they come on that day. They come on that day. Right. So it's like, you don't see how it is as an entrepreneur, which you're 20 plus years in. And now I'm, you know, 12 years plus in until you understand that living in that, like you said, right. Like you built the freedom, you knew how to get there where somebody who's in the wage slave world, dude, it takes time for them to acclimate. And I'm sure even because she's only what a year and a half out, she probably still has times where she was like, you know, when's the next check coming or, you know, Oh no, there's, <laughs> there's none of that, man. It was, it was the second dude, Jay, it was one of those, uh, it was one of those things, you know, how we talk to people and we're like, listen, when you give yourself the opportunity right. to, to expand the universe mm-hmm. will, will compensate. Exactly. And exactly. it was, it was just like that, that so you know, there was That's no awesome. looking back for one second. And yes, a hundred percent is while we were going through it, the comfort and the stability to know that the checks were coming in for right. me was debilitating, yeah, right? Because yeah. it contributed to me not having to necessarily um, feel like my back was against a wall exactly. for me, not right. necessarily having to right. get out and do the extra work that we as entrepreneurs yeah. have to constantly be doing. To it was a security blanket, dude. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And so again, the second she pulled the trigger it was like, okay, this is for real. And I'm all and our business just went. Phew, uh, that's exploded. amazing, man. I mean, honestly, to be honest, you know, and again, I, we can talk off air, but what you guys should do, and I know you're already got an amazing coaching company, but you guys should literally teach husband and wives how to work together. I mean, you <laughs> probably could actually build a coaching company on how to do that. Dude, that is a... Um, a work in progress. I mean, you know what? And yeah. and I will tell you that it has been a, and continues to be, I, we are, 
I, we're I, we're still in the infancy of yeah. of figuring right. out how to make that work. But I will say that, like you know, like I said, is it has certainly strengthened our bonds as right. um, husbands, as uh, husband wife, as partners, as business owners, um, which makes me excited. Uh, and I'm sure you can relate to this, but makes me excited for future ventures to come because I know right. that if we can tackle this together and figuring this shit out together, well, there's nothing that we're not capable of, um, which again, is, is just very, very exciting for me. But uh, she's going to be coming on my podcast um, That's awesome. in a couple of weeks. So I'm excited to have that conversation. Uh, but it has been a, a steep learning curve, my friend, for sure. No, well, I mean, it is, bro. I mean, I mean, you know, just... And I, I want to get to your points, but I mean, I, this is so relevant because I don't have conversations yeah. like this on my shows. So I think it's amazing. I mean, you know, to my wife's credit, um, in 2020 and 2021, all I was doing was working, bro. I mean, I told you right. about a seer off the air. I won't get into it, you know, until it's public. But I mean, that's all I did. I mean, I worked 15, right. 16 hours a day. I mean, I, you know, even yeah. during COVID, I still went to my office. It, I didn't matter, you know, with all the bullshit. I still went every day and I ground it out. And she was there watching the kids, you know, in the bullshit, whatever school was, you know, yep, during right, that stuff. Right. And so she was there and and still, you know, managing to be, you know, this amazing, you know, residential real estate um, salesperson that she is. And so it's like, you know, I'm so in debt to her. And so I also feel you on the aspect of like, you know, being more of a, you know, not stay at home dad, but, you know doing things that normally would be what our our right. wives or the women would do, you know, traditionally. And so I get it, man. It, it's not easy. I mean, every, I would say, again, I give my wife credit for this. In the last two years, almost every couple has had to do a massive adapt and pivot. There just wasn't any other option other, unless you want to get divorced and, and end right. up, you know, in a horrible relationship. So credit to both of you guys, uh, you know, but I'm glad that we talked about that because, you know, I'm not giving... I mean, I tell her, but I, I know maybe publicly speaking about it, you know, who, people who watch my show and listen to it, they'll understand that I'm really, truly grateful because I mean, she has been absolutely amazing, you know, to allow me well, to do what I did. And that's incredible. And, and I'm, I'm happy for you guys. And I think that, you know, the last couple of years have given all of us the opportunity to really identify, listen, like at the end of the day, if we're being honest mm -hmm. with ourselves, how sure. well these relationships are working right. or not working. Right. And um, giving us the opportunity to really dig in to, okay, like, is this something that we want to put the effort into making right. better? Or do we want to continue to absolve ourselves of, of the responsibilities that we committed to when we, you know, got married, right? Exactly and, right. and saying, I can continue to just get out of the house and go to work and right. escape or travel right. or drink or do all of the things right. that we hide behind. Right. Or I can continue to show up every single day. And again, the COVID like really enforced that. It's like, Absolutely. you say you want to be a better father and husband um, and provider. Now's your opportunity. So how exactly. are you showing up for everyone? That's exactly. Yeah. And, and so that's, that's I mean, been a really, well, beautiful. it's been so much of what hopefully, you know, I think so many people have had to like, just be confronted with to the mm -hmm. degree that it's like, all right, well, like, where do we go from here? How do we get better? You yeah. know, how do we continue to grow? Uh, yeah. and, and so I'm grateful for, for all of that. Yeah. Beautiful, man. Me too. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't say anything else. I mean, 2020 was like the shell shocking and then 2021, you know, you're dealing with like the V and the mandates and the family and right. like, are you going to get it? Are you not right. going to get it? Blah, blah. I mean, it was insane. So you're right, man. Like it was put up or shut up time. And, you know, there were many dark nights of the soul, I think for every couple, man. I mean, I, I know we had some amazing conversations in the middle of last year, you yeah. know, dealing with family and the pressures and, you know, again, the nonsense without getting into the details. It, it was, there were some definitely. There were some definite nights, you know, where I laid in bed thinking like, well, fuck, is this still right? You know, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you, Bert, man. Absolutely. All right, cool. So let's get into these uh, core beliefs, uh, which we're, we're going to talk about and we'll, you know, you know, go deep on these. Um, so five core beliefs, life force, by the way, I love that. I, you know, I always, whenever I do my spiritual conversations or lectures or whatever, and I just did one at biohacking Congress three weeks ago in Vegas, uh, I talked about spiritual alchemy and, you know, life force energy, which, 
you know, the Easterns call it chi, prana, right. you know, other people call it orgo and energy, but it's essentially life force energy. So, I mean, you're, you're literally talking about it, right? That set the precedent for how we show up for our clients and how we expect them to show up for us. The first one is freedom. Can you talk about that? Yeah. And, and then let me just preface for, for a moment, because I think what we were discussing before really lends itself to the opportunity that we had to kind of really establish what, like, what are the standards, right? Because Jay is like, how many, as you said, all of the difficult conversations and situations that we had to go through over the last couple of years, right? With, with family members, with friends, with just our own self and our relationships yeah. and our mm -hmm. children and the schools. Yeah. And it's like, if you don't have a set of values and standards that you live your life by, it makes it yeah. very, very yeah. difficult to make decisions that are in line with who you say you are or want to be. Right. And so right. by virtue of all of that, we were really forced to sit down and, and have these hard conversations and say, you know, what do we stand for? What do we stand against? You know, who do we want to align ourselves with? Who are the people in our lives that no longer align with, with who we are? And I think so many of us have been confronted with that, that, right. It's just, you know, we, we, we have friends that maybe we're no longer, you know, friends with, despite the fact that we love them. We have family members that we are not, you know, um, in line with, despite the fact that we love them. And so all of this, you know, one of the things that came out of the last couple of years was, was really sort of us identifying, well, what are we trying to do with our company? You know, obviously we're a nutrition coaching company, but like, what's our, you know, what's our mission? What's our big vision? You know, who are we serving? And, mm -hmm. and ultimately, you know, we, we kind of keep, kept coming back to this idea of freedom and, and, and the idea that your health determines your freedom. Right. right. How is that not so relevant in this day and age by virtue of the fact that what do, if you don't have your health, what do you have? Right. You don't have much, right? right? You can have all the Nothing. money in the world, right? We've all heard Nothing the cliches, is. but it's very, very true. And so by virtue of that, we said, well, what are our kind of core beliefs? What are our standards that we live by, that we expect from other people, that we want to um, show up for our clients with, and that we expect them to show up for us? And so within that, we came up with our life force, force being the acronym you know, F O R C E. Yeah, and then, as you said, the first one is freedom. And, and within freedom is we want you to never have to surrender your autonomy, right? Yeah. Is, is we are all capable and responsible adults, right? And we should be empowered to make decisions that are, you know, appropriate for us and where we are and our family and our lifestyle and so on and so forth. And so, you know, on a daily basis, one of the things that we strive to do with our coaching clients, as well as, you know, just teaching our children and, and expecting from each other is that you are an autonomous, free, um, you know, individual, smart, capable individual who can make decisions in a way um, that are appropriate for you. And you need the autonomy to be able to do that. Otherwise, we lose that sense of self, right? We lose the ability to have control over our life. And, and clearly you and I are in alignment around that's, that's not something that we want. We don't want other people to be able to make decisions for us. So that this, this idea of freedom is underlying everything. It's beautiful, bro. Like I say, it, I have my own, I don't have my little acronym like you guys have created, which is beautiful. I, I, I say you have to be sovereign, empowered, and free. And, you know, how many people are not, you know, when I, when I right. start looking and thinking and, you know, talking about people and from a consciousness scale standpoint, like, you know, the, the large swath of humanity is still externalizing their power. They're yeah. essentially disempowered. You yeah. know, they don't want to do what you're saying. You know, obviously these are not your coaching clients or the people that you and I hang out with, but you already no, said it. we have family members like this, right? Right. They right. do not want to take ownership for anything in their life, their health, their, their finances, their, you know, emotional and spiritual relationships and connections. They, they literally are disempowered and, you know, without going off the deep end, because we have some great stuff to talk about. I mean, that's what the narrative teaches the narrative, which is, you know, pop culture, 
the mainstream, the bullshit conditioning, it teaches people to be disempowered. It teaches yep. people to be victims. It's mind blowing to watch it. But like you said, it's up yep. to you as an individual to take full autonomy, personal accountability and responsibility for your life. It's that simple. It's that simple. And that, you know, lends itself to the, uh, you know, our second principle or standard or belief, if you will. And that's around ownership. Like we yep. said, it's like you are the owner of, of your life and you're the owner of your actions and no one else is. Beautiful. And yeah. so within that is what are you choosing to do? What are right. you choosing to right. believe, right? right? Is it's, it, you know, I, you can show up I, I, to work with us, yeah. um, but we're not going to be able to make decisions for you. We're not going right. to put the food in your mouth. We're not going <laughs> to, right, go grocery shopping for you. We're, we, we just are not going to make those decisions. You have to be empowered to do that and take responsibility for when it goes well and when it doesn't go well, because there's going to be a lot of times when it feels like it's not going well. Are you going to, you know, look at it pessimistically, judgmentally and, and say, woe's me, or are you going to show up, own it and decide to do better next time? It's like, that's the type of person that we want to work with. That's the type of people that we are. That's the type of people that we align ourselves with. And yeah. that's the type of person that we expect you to be if you're going to transform your life, period. I mean, nothing else can be said beyond that. I mean, again, it comes back to, you know, so we, we should analyze or ask the question, you know, again, why are so many people not taking ownership? And again, for me, we were given permission not to here, right. you're like out of a job, like here, we'll just give you money. Exactly. Right. Or, you know, right. whatever, just keep staying on employment right. or, right. you know, I mean, like, listen, let's, <laughs> we don't need to go down the rabbit hole there, but <laughs> ultimately is that I, I think it's, it's just, it runs deep within the fact that people aren't expected to take responsibility. Right. You, you know, there's, right. it's like right. my kids' baseball team. It's like, they're, they're terrible and they get a trophy, you know, at the end of the season. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> why? Like, well, you, you guys suck. Why should you get it? Why would you want to get better if you still, you're still like right. they get candy after every freaking practice. Like, you know well, what I mean? What's scary, so, what's scary is what you just said, you know, and we will go down the rabbit hole because it's you and me. Like, this is what they're attempting to do economically. They really right. do want to give out universal basic income at some point. Right. And it's just like, I mean, can dude. you imagine it's communism? It fails everywhere and everywhere it ever has been instituted. But again, Ben, what are they doing? I love how I say they. They <clears throat> delete history. The, the kids of today don't even know about the Korean War, the Vietnam War, World War One, World War Two. It's been erased. Yeah, it's just <laughs> reliance on on the government and right. and reliance on the on the medical system and the reliance on the fact that right. you know, well, we don't have to take care of our health because right. they're the taking care savior. of it for us. And there's yeah. there's pills and surgery, and you know, my <laughs> daily actions don't influence you know my health outcomes, and they, and they, you know, there so all of that stuff. But so the <laughs> the next belief is respect and you know we believe that respect is reciprocal right and it's just like basic fundamental you know law right of, of it is. jay you show up for me man i'm going to show up for you and i expect you to show up on time and i'm i'm going to respect your time and you're going to respect mine and, mm -hmm. uh, and you know just it, it, it's it's that in in essence is if there was a greater degree of respect um between you know, partners between uh, friends, between coach and client, and so on and so forth, uh, I think we'd all be a lot better off. And so that's just one of the principles that we uh, work to uphold with our children is like, you will show up early. Um, because if you're on time, you're already late. Um, yeah, right? Exactly. Just, right. And so I, I think obviously, we think that that's, uh, you know, pretty, pretty darn crucial. Well, I would say too, with presence, uh, I've written, I've read, read so many books on presence, but you know, I'll just always go to the indigenous, <clears throat> the indigenous of Mesoamerica have a word, which actually, by the way, is as I researched it more and more over time, I found out it's almost everywhere, but it's called on me. And it means divine reciprocity, which is basically everything is alive, conscious, sentient, 
and why would you not respect it? Right. It's like the golden rule to do unto others. It's like, you got to get to a place in your life where like when you're walking on planet earth, that you're conscious that everything that you're around is also yeah. sharing the same ecosystem that you're sharing. Yeah. Right. So I, I, yeah. I, I think about, I love that. I think about how people can't get rid of Ben, the mindset of like, Oh, it fell out of my car. It was a rapper. Right. You got to get to a place, literally every, all of us, by the way, you know, again, this is all about consciousness, raising it, but it, where you're like, you have such respect for everything that you can't do that. Right. And I know when I was in right. my twenties and thirties and I was coming up and I, I was never as conscious as I am now, I didn't give a shit about if a rapper fell out of my car, you know, or if I didn't right. put the plastic oh, yeah. bottle, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, but yeah. that's what presence is. It's, it, you know, it's, it's actually yeah. having a respect for everything and anything in your midst because we're all sharing the same ecosystem yeah i i love that um and it makes me think about um you know specifically makes me think about like our relationships and and one of the things that i'm working really hard on and, and probably the area that i need to improve the most is actually being present um especially right. like with my my you know, my children family, and yeah. you know how it is. Like, it's just same way, bro is, is being in the moment. Right. And, and giving them the respect that they deserve of actually being present with them, yeah. not yeah. in between, you know, toggling on my phone or running right. back and forth. You know, the, one of the hard parts about working from home is, is you're just always on the hard part always about having on, cell man. phones is you're always Literally, on. Always on. Yeah. And, um, so it just, that, that kind of triggered something in me of, of, uh, and I appreciate just the idea, right. Of presence is I think we can all do such a better job. Um, and we have that responsibility to do that for our, our loved ones for sure. I mean, dude, like I got to go deeper, uh, I'm the same way, uh, working out of the house all the time, switched on, we stopped. So we now have like a sacred space at dinner. Like there's mm -hmm. no technology. Yeah. I mean, basically in our house now, it's just Monica, myself and my two daughters, our 20 year olds in college in San Diego at Point Loma. So she's barely here. But uh, I mean, if you don't show up, you don't get food. Like you can eat on your own, right? Like it's not that draconian, but like if you don't show up without your phone, doesn't care. We don't give a shit who matters and you don't eat. It's just that simple yeah. now. And it's not a long time, Ben. You know, it's might be, 30, maybe 45 minutes, oh, yeah. but it's like, you're there present connecting to the other people asking about yes. their day, interfacing, yes. not looking down. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, like it's, it, 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 it takes, it requires serious effort to be this you way know, now, because like we said, we're all connected and switched on at all times with these goddamn phones. Well, you know, you're dead on. And, and that's one of the things that my parents did a really good job with it, is sort of having this kind of set, like it, it didn't matter what was going on, but every Friday night before, you know, I went out and, and, and got crazy with friends was like you, we were going to have a family dinner together, right? Exactly. It wasn't every night, but it was like every Friday night, we're going to have a family dinner together. And then you can go out and do whatever the heck it is that you want to do, but we're going to have this time together. We're going to be present with each other. We're going to talk about the week, enjoy each other's company, so on and so forth. And that's certainly one of the things that we've tried to instill with our children is between sports and what have you, right. uh, between our three kids, because they're between um, 12 and six now. It's like we were just all over the place with sports, but I, I we're with you is one of the things that I feel like we're doing well with is just having that sort of non-negotiable when it works out, we are at, at least a couple of times a week, we're sitting down together, we're having dinner together or, and or breakfast together and no, you know, technology present. And we know clearly from research too, that it's a very, very important opportunity for us to um, display, uh, you know, what it looks like to be a responsible adult, what it looks like to eat in a responsible way, right? If we're trying to set a good example for our children yeah. on eating healthy foods, right? Well, then we need to show up and actually do that in front of them. We can't be sitting with our spoon in the you know jug of ice cream and be like, you know, you can't have this. It's not good for you. Like that's not <laughs> teaching them, which, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it's like a lot of people are, are doing. And 
um, there's certainly no judgment, but it's saying the best thing that we can do is to yeah. set that example and lead by, you know, through our actions. And so um, I appreciate that you brought that up because I think that's an extremely valuable opportunity for families to have together, even if it's just a couple meals a week. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, and by the way, I'm the same dude, you know, my daughter's 12, 14, they're in dance and cheer. And literally yeah. it is in every night. Yeah. Pinnacle shuffle. Who's taking them? Who's picking <laughs> them up? Blah, blah, blah. Do they have a carpool? You know? So, I, I mean, I, I'm with you. I, I'm totally I with know. you. And you're right. It can't happen every night, but there's at least two nights, you know, out of seven that you can do it. And last night we had it, you know, and literally Monica had to remind my youngest, like, do not walk into this kitchen with your phone. You yeah. know, yelling up the stairs. If you do, you're turned around, you're done. You know, it's not happening. <laughs> so, so I mean, like you really do though have to uphold, you know, that standard. Like I said, create that sacred space that this is about family connection. And honestly, dude, it is mind blowing to see. And I know you've seen this and heard this and played this game, but like when you go out to a restaurant and you yeah. just observe, it is insane how disconnected families and humanity really is now. I mean, people, pretty I mean, I see men and women dude on dates, boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, I would assume sometimes obviously husband and wife and they're not even, I know it's mind blowing how this has literally excommunicated us, excommunicated us from our presence as humans. You know what well, I'm saying? It, it's, it's not, I, being, we're not yeah. being anymore. We're not human being anymore. We're humans doing. That's mm -hmm. It, we one of the things that we've observed uh, over the last couple of years in our in our coaching practice, and, and then of course, listen, I mean, just with the, the quote unquote pan pandemic, and um, you know, is the the further loss of human connection, right, right. that we're experiencing. Right. And so, one of the things that we strive to create um, in our coaching practice is, listen, of course, like we teach clients how to build the, you know, the skills and the behaviors that are necessary for them to make better nutrition decisions, for them to control their calorie intake, for them to exercise in ways that work for their body and, and, and work for their goals and so on and so forth. But we know fundamentally that the people that are most, that, that are one, the healthiest, right. Two, that are the most successful with their, um, weight loss goals are the people that have a very strong sense of community and connection. Yeah. Yeah. And so right. that's where we really um, have made a concerted effort to actually bring our clients together as much as possible. So we run an annual um, a, a retreat or, or workshop, as we call Beautiful. it now, where we get you know our, all of our clients together that come in from all over, all over the US. And we uh, actually have clients from other countries as well. Um, we, you know, we do obviously weekly community calls for us to get sure. on a zoom call together and have a conversation. And we do kind of quarterly events. We have a lot of local clients here in Phoenix. Uh, so we have clients over to our house, you know, every quarter for dinner, just to get together. Because as you said, it's like, we need to connect. We need to be together. We need to get uh, to feed off of, of each other's energy right. um, and grow together, especially in the space where we are, um, you know, especially like in a coaching practice where it's like someone is, is clearly admitting that they have opportunity for growth. Well, what resources can we provide to help them do just that? Well, one is to surround yourself with people who are doing the same thing and or have been in your shoes and can provide that mental, physical, emotional framework um, and trajectory for you. It's, 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 it's fundamental in anything that we're trying to improve upon, right? That's right. It's just, yeah, it's fundamental. Yeah, I mean, again, that's beautiful. Um, the one, the number one thing that I, you know, listen to, you know, the people in my audience and that I, you know, regularly work with, I mean, I have group coaching, you know, I'm not doing any one-on-one -on -one stuff anymore, but uh, is that personal connection. And, you know, I want to, you know, talk about that for a second, because if you read, you know, any of the great spiritual sages, masters, gurus, it's all about energy. You just kind of said it already. It's, you know, when you really go deeper and you start getting into guys like this, like Hawkins and, you know, uh, Neville Goddard and stuff, you know, they'll talk about, we're not these physical bodies, right? We're energy mm. inhabiting these yeah. physical avatar bodies. And so it's like, 
when you really see things from that perspective, you know, almost a multidimensional perspective, of course, you understand why humans desire physical connection, presence, intimacy, relationship, because it's the yeah. energy. You're yeah. literally in the midst, you know, the whole, you know, you got the statement, the Yeshua, Jesus, whatever you want to call it, uh, statement of like, you know, where two or three are gathered, there I am, right? So it's the presence of the energy and the connection of the energy that literally makes people feel resonance, you know, or coherence or just like, again, connected, they feel better. And that's where, like yeah. you said, in the last two years, it's been taken away from us. Zoom calls, you know, kids, dude, my daughters have not been in school since 2020 in the early part of the year. You know, they moved yeah. down here at the end of quote unquote, whatever that debacle in, you know, LA public schools was in 2020 and they're totally not veed. So they, and, and I'm not letting them. So like, you know, right. they're out. Totally. so they got to do home and, you know, in person and all this nonsense, but like, dude, they're desperate to go back to a school so they can experience the social culturization, you know, of being around other quote unquote, 12 and 14 and 15 year old kids. Yeah. And it's mind blowing. But again, we don't see it again from this energetic connection. I mean, you and I do, and people like us do, but the average person doesn't understand that that's all we really are is energy. Yeah, man. It's, you know, I, I'll be honest, like I don't, this, this resonates so much with me, this conversation. I don't, you know, I don't read anything or, or know much about consciousness per se, but it is, all of this is resonating so much with me simply by virtue of the fact that, you know, when you've, you've been doing what we do for long enough, I've, I've, I've spoken with thousands upon thousands of people sure. and had these, you know, opportunities to connect one-on-one -on -one. and all of our coaching business, frankly, is one-on-one -on -one coaching for that exactly. very reason is because we have, um, identified and observed that, you know, that's when people get the best results exactly. is you can track your fucking macros all you want and, and, you know, weigh and measure your food metabolically and you can, flexible. right. And you can do your, your metabolic flexibility and it's all good and well, it's like, it's great. Like it doesn't, it doesn't make you a bad person, whatever right. you decide to do, like that's great, whatever works for you. But what we've observed from a coaching standpoint is like, it's the, it's the, the personal connection, the engagement, um, the acknowledgement, the, uh, right. Just the opportunity to energetically connect with someone that really helps them continue to reinforce uh, the behaviors that they're trying to change, um, and build in their life. And so, um, I, I'm appreciative of, of kind of everything that we're talking about, because it's kind of solidifying some things in my mind. Well, let me just say this to you, bro. And I don't say this to a lot of people very often. You've been on the show for three times because you're one of the highest conscious people I've ever spoken to. I don't know if you really understand how conscious you are. Like it comes off in your presence. You're so very calm. Like you are centered emotionally and it just comes out. So yeah, you don't have to read the works of Hawkins and all that stuff to be, who you are, but obviously it comes back in your coaching business. It comes back in your relationships. It comes back in the conversations that you have. I mean, that's why I generally love speaking to you. You know, you are very there, you're present. You have this energy about you, you know? So, I mean, again, cr credits to you. I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass. It's, no. you know, it's who you are. And so that's why you have the base, the, the relationships that you've created, the business that you've created. It's why you were able to get your wife to come work with you. Because <laughs> of who you are. So, there's, there's two well, other things though that I want to keep. Thank going you. On this. Thank, so, thank you for that. Yeah, I, welcome, I appreciate bro. it. You, you, you deserve that to hear that, you know? So, um, the last two on the acronym are, um, C and E, which is choice and effort. Yeah. Now, there's a lot there, right? Because choice, I mean, man, I mean, to me, choice is the key because like you said at the beginning of the show, you know, every single day when we wake up in the morning, we can choose to lay there and say, my life sucks. Yeah. Or we can choose to say, you know what? I have a new day ahead of me. And this is the greatest yeah. opportunity, blah, blah, blah. Right? Like, so it's, it always does come down to that, but I want to hear you expound on that. You know, formally is, is kind of within, within choice. We says, we, we, we say, trust what is best for you. Exactly. Right. And in the fact that you're under no obligation to sacrifice your values or your desires to please anyone else. Exactly. And I think fundamentally speaking, when we talk about, 
making change in our life, we need to identify with what, why we want to make that change. Um, personally is for so much of my life, I realized that I was making decisions based on trying to please other people, trying to get, you know, win the approval of my parents, um, right. and you know, so on and so forth. And once I, um, gave myself permission to move away from, uh, making decisions based on what I thought they wanted me to do, right. um, opened a whole nother world of enjoyment, of, of satisfaction. And so ultimately, you know, when we talk about, again, making change, you come to me and you say you want to make change in your life. Why do you want to make that change? Right. Why is that relevant? How are you going to become a different person? What choices are you going to make every single day right. that are going to continue to reinforce the type of person that you said that you want to become? Right. Because it's going to be really hard work and you're going to be faced with a lot of um, a lot of difficult uh, decisions. Yeah. And that's where ultimately you're going to have to keep coming back to what choices am I making and what's best for me based on everything that's going on. You know, that's, that's really, um, I think what is so necessary for all of us to identify. You know, something on that, and, and this goes back even to the uh, point before, and I left, I forgot it, but you said it, that triggered my thought, but you know, my wife always says this and she's really deep into this stuff, even more so than I am. But like, she's like, you can teach a person all the amazing things that guys like, you know, Ben and Jay know about nutrition and exercise and, you know, anatomy and biomechanics and, you know, exercise physiology and all these, you know, geeky things that you and I are nerdy, not have nerdy knowledge about. But like, if that person that we're teaching it to doesn't actually feel worthy of a learning it and B yeah. and applying it, it doesn't matter. And so sometimes I think about how guys like you and I go to these conferences and, you know, we speak and, you know, they want us to talk about all these things that we know. And it's like, if that person out there is listening, but doesn't truly feel worthy of actually receiving the information, who gives a shit? Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's, and that's probably where you guys, you know, your coaching business, you and your wife are so amazing. Cause like, you probably can like really speak that to the people that you guys work with that like, look, you have to first feel worthy of changing and making yeah. these decisions and taking the information that we can give you and applying it. Because if you don't, you will never do it. And dude, today in today's day and age, so many people will want to hire you or buy your stuff or whatever. And then, you know, you talk to them for a minute and you can just tell they're going from one guru to the next guru. Right. It's crazy. No, you said it, man. And it's sort of identifying it's, <clears throat> but it, look at the end of the day, that's what it all comes down to is, is kind of why are you deciding to make change? Why are you ready for it now? How is yeah. this going to be different than any other time? Right. right. You know, what do you really want your life to look like? Right. And, um, yeah. And, and if you don't feel worthy, why don't you feel worthy? And how do we kind of get to, the, the meat of that. Right. Uh, and right, right. Because ultimately so often, um, the conversation will come down to you're miserable in your job, you're miserable in your relationships. Um, and you fucking hate, you know, the life that you're living and no amount of, you know, no amount of intermittent fasting is going <laughs> to fix that. <laughs> Right. It's just like 4 a.m. burpees. It's not going to cut it, bro. It's like, I get it. You you probably don't have control over a lot of things in your life. And so right. you want to take control over, you know, this is like a lot of guys, right? They just want to like get quote unquote shredded. It's right. Like, why? Right. Why exactly. do you want to do that? It's, it's an, it's a miserable experience. If you like really, right. If you really want to get shredded. Um, and so totally. Like, what are you trying to control for that you don't have control in other areas of your life, right? So on and so forth. So it, it's definitely always deeper than I just want to, you know, look good in a swimsuit. It's, I mean, it is, man. And I mean, you know, I know for a long time in my life when I really wasn't understanding the why and really, really looking at the metaphysical aspect of things, I could just, like you, you know, just, this is what you do. Right. <laughs> Let's, they're not hearing part. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, the easy part. The hard exactly, part is yeah. exactly. I don't know. If, exactly. Did you read the email that I sent this morning? Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, Your but, emails but, are amazing, by the way. You know, and you know, what's funny is I don't know how you did this. You didn't, but I did this. 
but somehow you got on my like Apple star list, but you know, sometimes you're going through your phone and you just somehow hit the button. So like you have the only email that goes into my I star iCloud list. And so I have no other emails, bro. I have literally thousands of people emailing me a day between my three emails and you're the only one that goes in there. So it's like the greatest gift. Cause I read your emails. I don't read anybody's emails. Dude, I, I, uh, I appreciate that. How many times I'm, have I responded I'm flattered. to you? I mean, seriously, like yeah, how many yeah, times actually. have I responded to you in the last two years saying, dude, this is gold. And oh, then thanks, finally man. I was like, Hey, you got to come back on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I, hey, All right, look, the last one is effort. Okay. Yeah. And this is just like, right. And it is, it is just creating your impact. Right. And everything that we do. Yeah. Um, and it was said, because no one's going to do it for you is yeah. you, you've got to put in the effort um, in your relationships, in your job and in, you know, with, with your family, um, in, in the choices that you make, so on and so forth. It's just like for us, it, it's, it's been a, a paramount, like foundational pillar and both for, for my wife and I were like, we both had jobs. I was started working at 14 years old. She started, you know, working 15 or, you know, maybe even earlier, 15 or 16 years old. And it's just like you show up and you do a good job and right. you know, it, it, that's just what you do. Right. And why is that not present now? So you've got to put in the effort in every single thing. If there's anything we can teach our children, if there's anything we can teach our clients, it's like it can, it requires continual effort and it's not hard to do that, to keep showing up because right. just by virtue of doing that, you're automatically going to separate yourself from 95% of the, of the rest exactly. of the people. 98% Ben, because again, and you kind of said it, and I want to mention it before we end the show is that these goddamn things have taken away curiosity and critical thinking. Most of these young people today, and again, I don't want to label or judge or condemn just as an observational statement, then why would they want to work hard for anything when it's like yeah. shows up, ding, the door, yeah. food, click. I mean, these things have literally taken away the things that you and I grew up like having to work for, which was, I mean, I always use this, dude, you know, this, we had to literally go to the card catalog <laughs> Right. We use the Dewey Decimal the System. The Dewey Decimal <laughs> System of pulling the drawer out, Dude, fumbling through. These kids, I mean, again, and again, not to label, condemn, or judge, but they don't have to do that. So, you know, their question to you and me at the end, if they're watching this, and I got a lot of younger millennials that do watch this, they'll be like, bro, why would I, who gives a shit? I can push a button. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, I get it. I see from their eyes too, but you know, you're right. Like, if you do not understand that living in planet earth in a physical body requires contrast to evolve and grow your soul, then you're never going to get it. And you don't, you don't grow through easy, right? You grow through the difficulties, the challenges, the obstacles. That's how we grow. Dude. It, I mean, that's it. And, and it's just, I think about, um, you know, coming back to the idea of effort is like, what do I need to do to make it unreasonable for me right. to fail? Right. Exactly. Whereas most people look at it as like, what's the minimal amount that I need to do to be successful? <laughs> easy button, easy it's button, like, easy I'm right. going to do it so much, so hard for so long and put right. in so many freaking reps that right. it would be unreasonable for me to fail. And this is, you know, look, this is the health and fitness space in a nutshell. It's like, it's not, and, and that's weight loss space. And, and right. this is when you undergo a quote unquote transformation. It's like, yeah. dude, you may do great over six months, but what's it going to look like six years later? And so that's right. why I think success is built in decades, not days. Exactly. It's dude, you just got to keep putting in the reps over and over. And all that comes down to being willing to do more than what the average person is, is willing to do. And frankly, that's not very much. <laughs> Bro, you're amazing, man. All right. Let me put your stuff up here. The beauty of StreamYard. Got it. Look at that. So cool. um, if somebody watches this show tonight or today or when, you know, the recording when, when they watch it or whatever, uh, and you know, obviously wants to work with you, connect with you, podcast with you, what is the best way for them to connect? 
Yeah, they can check out our website. Obviously, it's it's streamed up here, bslnutrition.com. They can follow us on social media at BSL Nutrition. If they head over to the website, bslnutrition.com, there's a you know a tab to they can schedule a strategy call where we just jump on a call together and have a conversation around where you are now, where you want to go, um, what's getting in the way, and see if we have the tools to be able to help you bridge that gap. Uh, the program's not right for um, everybody. And it's, you know, it, it really comes down to whether we determine if it's a good fit for you. And if it is, then we invite you to join. If not, no harm, no foul. We'll absolutely push you in the right direction. So that's, you know, you can check out our, our podcast. It's the Smart Nutrition Made Simple Show, which I'd love to have you back on. Yeah, by the way, so I need to come back on too. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I'm just very grateful for everyone that made it this far in the episode. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Awesome, man. And thank Jay, you. Thank me. you so much, dude, for, for the opportunity. I'm, I'm, I'm so ever uh, grateful for of you. Course, and, brother. And, I mean, I'm grateful for you doing. too, man. I love and appreciate you always. And again, I thought this was a profound podcast because again, we talked about things that were, you know, not really things a lot of people are willing and mm -hmm. able to talk about, um, you know, especially in the last two years, but I mean, you made so many great points. So again, I'm grateful. Thank you. Uh, so for all of you guys watching the Jay Campbell podcast, support the amazing people that come on the show. Please go to Ben's website, bslnutrition.com. If you're in the international community and you're looking for an amazing life and new, new I would call you a life coach, but I mean, basically a nutrition wow. coach who can change your life. This is the guy that can do it for you. So, and remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. I will see all of you guys very soon.